Thank you. Thank you very much, everybody. Sorry to keep you waiting. Complicated business. Complicated. Thank you very much. I've just received a call from Secretary Clinton. She congratulated us, it's about us, on our victory. And I congratulated her and her family on a very, very hard-fought campaign. I mean, she, she fought very hard. Hillary has worked very long and very hard over a long period of time, and we owe her a major debt of gratitude for her service to our country. I mean that very sincerely. Now it's time for America to bind the wounds of division. We have to get together. To all Republicans and Democrats and independents across this nation, I say it is time for us to come together as one united people. It's time. I pledge to every citizen of our land that I will be president for all Americans, and this is so important to me. For those who have chosen not to support me in the past, of which there were a few people, <laughs> I'm reaching out to you for your guidance and your help so that we can work together and unify our great country. As I've said from the beginning, ours was not a campaign, but rather an incredible and great movement made up of millions of hardworking men and women who love their country and want a better, brighter future for themselves and for their family. It's a movement comprised of Americans from all races, religions, backgrounds, and beliefs who want and expect our government to serve the people and serve the people it will. Working together, we will begin the urgent task of rebuilding our nation and renewing the American dream. I've spent my entire life in business looking at the untapped potential in projects and in people all over the world. That is now what I want to do for our country. Tremendous potential. I've gotten to know our country so well. Tremendous potential. It's going to be a beautiful thing. Every single American will have the opportunity to realize his or her fullest potential. The forgotten men and women of our country will be forgotten no longer. We are going to fix our inner cities and rebuild our highways, bridges, tunnels, airports, schools, hospitals. We're going to rebuild our infrastructure, which will become, by the way, second to none. And we will put millions of our people to work as we rebuild it. We will also finally take care of our great veterans who've been so loyal, and I've gotten to know so many over this 18-month journey. The time I've spent with them during this campaign has been among my greatest honors. Our veterans are incredible people. We will embark upon a project of national growth and renewal. I will harness the creative talents of our people, and we will call upon the best and brightest to leverage their tremendous talent for the benefit of all. It's going to happen. We have a great economic plan. 
We will double our growth and have the strongest economy anywhere in the world. At the same time, we will get along with all other nations willing to get along with us. We will be. We'll have great relationships. We expect to have great, great relationships. No dream is too big. No challenge is too great. Nothing we want for our future is beyond our reach. America will no longer settle for anything less than the best. We must reclaim our country's destiny and dream big and bold and daring. We have to do that. We're going to dream of things for our country and beautiful things and successful things once again. I want to tell the world community that while we will always put America's interests first, we will deal fairly with everyone, with everyone. All people and all other nations. We will seek common ground, not hostility, partnership, not conflict. And now, I'd like to take this moment to thank some of the people who really helped me with this, what they are calling tonight, very, very historic victory. First, I want to thank my parents, who I know are looking down on me right now. Great people. I've learned so much from them. They were wonderful in every regard. I had truly great parents. I also want to thank my sisters, Marianne and Elizabeth, who are here with us tonight. And where are they? They're here someplace. They're very shy, actually. And my brother, Robert, my great friend. Where is Robert? Where is Robert? My brother, Robert. And they should all be on this stage, but that's okay. They are great. And also, my late brother, Fred. Great guy. Fantastic guy. Fantastic family. I was very lucky. Great brothers, sisters, great, unbelievable parents. To Melania and Don. And Ivanka. And Eric. And Tiffany. And Baron. I love you and I thank you. And especially for putting up with all of those hours. This was tough. This was tough. This political stuff is nasty and it's tough. So I want to thank my family very much. Really fantastic. Thank you all. Thank you all. And Lara, unbelievable job. Unbelievable. Vanessa, thank you. Thank you very much. What a great group. You've all given me such incredible support, and I will tell you that we have a large group of people. You know, they kept saying we have a small staff. Not so small. Look at all the people that we have. Look at all of these people. Bob, what are you reflecting on this morning? You know, I remember when Richard Nixon resigned and CBS News correspondent Roger Mudd was part of the panel. Uh, after that happened, and they said, Roger, what's your reaction? And he said, you know, I think I want to go home and sleep a couple of hours, and I'll come back and tell you tomorrow. I, 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 this was totally unexpected. Uh, I, I think uh, uh, certainly uh, from those of us who've been covering politics and in, uh, over the years, this is, I think Charlie is right. This is, this is historic. But I don't think we can say right now where this goes from here. Unexpected, not because of any interest in politics, but unexpected because of the polling. The polls were telling us. Uh, polls done by many different organizations at many different times. They were all pointing in the direction of a Clinton victory. The polls and the behavior of a candidate that, that people said did not was not fit to be president of the United States. So many people had found his behavior egregious, but at the end of the day, it really didn't matter. I take, you know, I take some hope in his speech tonight, though, that he said he wants to reach out, that he wants to build bridges, and that he wants us all to come together. I think that's a really good way to start in this country because there's a lot of healing that needs to happen today. If you look at, to your point, Gail, if you, the, on the questions of has the right experience and has the right judgment, Hillary Clinton won those questions 
by gargantuan amounts and numbers, but again, it's not what people uh, wanted. They want to change over experience and message. judgment. They're fed up. All right. Well, yeah. we, we, change we is what they all will of get. You. And we it, hope, has been, it has <laughs> been quite a night. We hope he rules by fear rather than, I mean, by hope rather than fear. fear. Well, his conciliatory ex, uh, uh, victory speech tonight was certainly uh, a very good step mm -hmm. in a long, long process over these next four years. Mm -hmm. We sure are grateful that you stayed here with us all this time. The yes, rocket who are you people? Yes, the sometimes yes, raunchy yeah. election of 2016 yeah. now comes to a peaceful, if improbable, end. 70-year-old right. Donald J. Trump will be sworn in as the 45th president of the United States on January the 20th. The Trump presidency begins in 72 days, fueled by what we know now is record turnout. Election coverage continues now on our streaming news service, CBSN, and there will be much more in just a few hours. Really? Yeah. yeah. Who's going to be Charlie here, Nora? And I, right back here. Wearing these same clothes. Yeah. Yeah. For Nora O'Donnell and our entire <laughs> campaign 2016 team, I'm Scott Pelley. Thank you for being with us on CBS. I am officially running for President of the United States. I'm back. When Mexico sends its people, they're not sending their best. I'm running to help working families get a raise. We will make America great again. The American people are sick and tired of hearing about your damn emails. It's weak to disparage women. It's no weak to disparage Hispanics. A man who can be provoked by a tweet should not be anywhere near the nuclear codes. I could stand in the middle of Fifth Avenue and shoot somebody, and I wouldn't lose any voters. Just remember... Love Trump's hate. I humbly accept your nomination. nomination for President of the United States. Russia, if you're listening, I hope you're able to find the 30,000 emails. I'm not making excuses. I've said it was a mistake and I regret it. This is the single biggest scandal since Watergate. There is no case here. We're going to win at the border. We're going to build a wall. Mexico's going to pay for the wall. You could put half of Trump supporters into what I call the basket of deplorables. She has tremendous hate in her heart. I don't care what he says about me. I care about what he says about you. I pledge to every citizen of our land that I will be president for all Americans.